Using the optimization techniques that I've shown you in previous videos, I went ahead off camera and did some optimization, spent some time tweaking some textures, uh, making some of them smaller um, than they needed to be. I'm going to say that I'm pretty happy so far. I also turned off the screen space aiming occlusion on the camera simply because I decided that the extra darkening from the ambient occlusion really wasn't helping my scene. The scene's already dark enough as you can see. I already have some ambient occlusion that I did on my texture baking in my 3D package. I also did ambient occlusion with the Beast Light Mapper inside of Unity. So I really don't think that we need any extra ambient occlusion for this scene. Um, the performance hit that I take from that is not worth it in this particular case. Uh, but of course that's just a judgment call. Again, it's not a right or wrong. It's really about a matter of taste, how you want the game to look and uh, also how you are gonna balance out your optimization versus quality and this looks pretty good already so uh, with that done one last thing I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna add an extra light that I was looking at this and I decided that I would add an extra light over here I just thought it would look pretty cool so I'm gonna get a point light place in this spot over here let me switch my layout to a tall layout and this light that's over here it's just kind of a volume light to add some extra depth to that area over there which I thought was just missing something since we have that interesting hole in the wall right there might as well make this area over here a little bit more interesting so I'm gonna give this kind of a warmish yellow hue to it and in terms of range I don't think I want to increase the range too much let me increase the intensity a little bit so maybe something like this looks pretty good this isn't gonna be animated by the way it's just kind of a static light that I want to place here. It's actually a real-time light. But I want to kind of put this over here just to lighten this area up a little bit and make it look like some light from the outside is kind of seeping in. So you have to kind of this volume of light right there. And what I also want to do is let me try something here. Uh, let me take this light here and I'm going to hit Control-D to make a duplicate of it. Let me just move it to the side a little bit so it's a little bit easier to see. And what I'm going to do with this light here, and I don't want this light to have shadows by the way just kind of a volume light for the uh, ambience there uh, for this light what I want to do is let me see let me do a draw halo drop the intensity a little bit just to have kind of that misty halo type of look right there a little bit kind of make it look like there's like dust in the air or something like that maybe a little bit more not too much I don't want to kill the effect by overdoing it okay the color looks good and stuff I think that looks pretty nice here's what I'm gonna do let me switch over back to a 2 by 3 layout and let me go over here and take my first person controller let me rotate this guy so it's facing that wall over there let me move it a little bit closer so I can get a good idea of how this looks it looks pretty cool actually right there but uh, I think the brightness is a little bit too strong so maybe something more like this and maybe I'll increase the range a bit too and the intensity is still a bit strong so I'll reduce it so something kind of subtle like that looks pretty cool and let me take the other light this is the one with the halo I don't want to increase the range too much so something like that okay let me um, maximize this on play let me play test it real quick whoa that's running really slow there for some reason let me stop that real quick let me not maximize it on play let me see what happens when I run it in the small window yeah it was kinda of chugging there um, you don't want to do all your play testing inside the editor let me make let me make a note of that that um, when you're doing play testing for frame rates and performance the best play testing to do is when you create a build and I'm gonna talk about creating a build in this video but you don't want to do all your performance play testing inside of the unity editor simply because you're not gonna get the most um, you're not going to get the best fidelity or the best readings on performance simply because the game's trying to run while the editor is also running and it's not the most optimized way of running a game. Uh, so if your game's running kind of slow in the editor, when you run the standalone final version, it'll actually run much faster. That's just the way that it works simply because you're running it inside the editor. So this actually looks pretty good. It has that nice kind of misty feeling to it. When I come over here and I look at this, it looks kind of cool. That looks cool. So it's just an extra little touch to this. So I think I'm done with this. Finally, to wrap up this entire tutorial in this video, I'm going to talk about creating a build. Obviously, when you're finished creating a game, you need to do something called creating a build, a standalone build in this case. And uh, this is where we're going to talk about publishing builds. Okay, 
So to publish a build is actually very easy. Unity makes it extremely easy. All you need to do is come up to the file menu. We're going to go to build settings. And this is the build settings window. And remember when we switched to bird rendering, we actually looked at this window. This is where you can choose your platforms. Again, I talked a little bit about this. The grayed out platforms are the ones that you probably don't have a license for. But uh, in this case, I'm using the standard Unity Pro version. So uh, PC, Mac, Standalone, and Web Player are available as platforms. I'm going to choose the PC, Mac, Standalone option. Since I'm running a Windows machine, I'm going to choose target platform Windows, but you can also choose Mac as well as Windows. Okay. And when I choose that, I'm going to go to the player settings. That's going to open up the player build settings over here in the inspector. This is where you can do some pretty interesting things. You can put your company name, your product name. I'm just going to call this the Game Sample Unity 3 from i3 Tutorials. You can also set up a default icon. Okay, So um, you can create an icon for your game and actually put it here. And that actually be a pretty good thing to do. So how can you create an icon? Well, there's probably 101 ways of doing that. One simple way that I'm going to use just for this tutorial is I could take a uh, hit print screen on my keyboard, take a screenshot, and then uh, go into like something like Microsoft Paint or uh, Photoshop or something like that and create an icon, uh, which I'm going to go ahead and do. So I'm just opening Microsoft Paint here after I hit print screen, and I'll just hit Control V to paste. And here's the, the screenshot here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to crop. So I'm going to take the selection tool here and let me crop. Maybe I'll crop this area right here. I'm going to hit crop just to crop that out. So we have kind of this image right there that will represent our game. And go ahead and save this out. I'm going to save it into my Unity project directory. Okay, so I saved that as game icon, which you can see right here. Here's the game. I, I simply just saved that in Microsoft Paint. So I call it game icon. Let me go back to those build settings. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to select that game icon. There it is. Okay, so let's go down here. Resolution and presentation. We can select the uh, default resolution we want to run the game at. I'm going to push this to the max. I'm going to go with 1920 by 1080. Uh, standalone player options. Default full screen. I'm going to check that on so the game runs at full screen. Um, let me see here. Display resolution dialog. I'll enable that. Supported aspect ratios. You can go through your aspect ratios of which ones your game is going to support. I recommend leaving them all checked on. If you go to icon over here, you could set up more uh, icons. For example, you can hit an override for the standalone. And you could set up individual icons for the high res for the different sizes like the 32 by 32. I'm going to leave it at default. We can also set up a splash image. Okay. So we can come in here and create a new image just for the splash if we wanted to. I don't want to go ahead and do all of that. I can just reuse my game icon over here. Obviously, you'd want to take the time to do a really cool splash image. But in this case, I'm just moving quickly here. The rendering settings I'm going to leave alone. I've already got it set to deferred rendering, which is what I want. And that's pretty much it. Once I've got the player settings set up how I want, I don't want to go to build and run. Because if I go to build and run, what's going to happen is it's going to build the game and it's going to automatically launch it and if it launches it with unity running over here in the background the game's going to run pretty slow and that's not what I want so I'm going to hit build so it builds it but it doesn't launch it I want to launch it manually myself I'm going to build it right inside the unity projects directory um, you can give it any name you want I'm just going to call it game test and it's going to be an exe file in this case hit the save button and unity is going to do everything for you automatically it's just going to go ahead and build the game now the more complex the game, the longer it's going to take to build. This is a pretty simple game though, so it should only take a few seconds to build it. When it finishes, it's going to launch the folder where you save the game to. And you can see here it is Game Test EXE, and there's my icon image, remember that. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, launch the game. But I'm going to close Unity when I launch the game because I don't want uh, Unity to be running in the background while I launch the game. So if we do launch this game, you're going to get this configuration, the standard configuration window. Um, that's the default. There's my splash image. Remember that? I use the same icon image. You can use a different one if you want. Um, you can choose here the screen resolution. By default, it's going to 1920 by 1080 because that's what I chose. And then I can hit play to start playing this game. So basically, I switched uh, recording software. Uh, this one does a much better job of capturing the frame rate, even though it still looks a bit choppy. Um, but when I play this in real time on my system without recording or anything like that, 
it actually plays a lot better than what it might be represented in the video. So you can see all the nice lighting, there's the sun shafts and stuff, which is an image effect on the camera, which we placed earlier, if you remember, uh, if we come up these stairs right here, we can come in the warehouse and we can see everything. Those uh, internal lens uh, effects look really awesome. Uh, you can see all the nice lighting, the ambient lighting there from the light maps. If we go up here up the stairs, we can see the really cool animation on the lights, which makes it look, uh, just gives it a lot more mood and atmosphere. Looks really awesome, actually. And uh, here's all the details and everything, and it's uh, looking pretty good. So we uh, went ahead, we set this all up, created a build, and then we can uh, just double-click the EXC to start the build and, and play, uh, play a game on, uh, on a PC, a Windows system. So the game, again, it ran pretty good. Looked, uh, looked excellent, ran a pretty good, decent frame rate. Um, ran at very high quality settings. All I've got all the bells and whistles going on. Got good performance, good quality, looks great. That's going to do it for this entire tutorial. Thanks a lot for joining me in Volume 1. Um, going to be looking at releasing more volumes on next-gen game development with Unity. There's still a lot more to touch. Game development is such a huge, huge topic. You really can't learn how to be a game developer or be a professional game developer you know, by sitting down for a few hours uh, looking at one tutorial. So I'm going to be releasing a lot more tutorials in the future, uh, things that cover other aspects of Unity and the workflow and the pipeline. So thanks a lot for watching. Thanks for your support. Um, I hope you enjoyed uh, this tutorial, and I hope you learned a lot from it. A lot of work went into this tutorial. It took a long time to do. It was a lot of R&D and a lot of work, and I hope you learned a few things here on Next Gen Game Development for Unity 3.0. It's a great game engine. I hope you join me again in the future for uh, more Unity and next-gen game development tutorials, which I'm looking at uh, releasing in the near future. Uh, if you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, please come by the i3 Tutorials Forum, and you can post something there, and we'll have a look at it and try to help you off any questions you have or, or uh, if you got uh, any suggestions for future training you'd like to see. We always love to take that into consideration for uh, future training. So thanks a lot, and I uh, hope to see you soon.